Hello everyone and welcome to episode 2 of Solid Season 3. In the last episode I had a lot of problems with my audio, but this time it should be like a normal episode. But like I mentioned last episode, I want to start this episode by creating a shop. This shop will be called The Blimp. It's going to be a huge aerial balloon that's just going to sell everything we have. From slime balls, to iron, to the runes, to the shirts I collected. But to do that, I kind of need a lot of materials. And if I use Lightomatica, I can see I need a lot of dark oak, smooth quartz, and also birch wood. But well, the problem here is the 1,000 like smooth quartz because that's 4,000 quartz and I don't think I can find enough while mining. So I think I'm going to start this episode off by making a small piglin farm or a bartering farm. So I'll get that set up right now. So I'm in the nether right now, but I realize it might be easier to make a piglin farm on the nether roof. But I don't think any member has actually gotten there this season. So I guess I'll, I can start like a mini nether hub up there. This should be 27, I guess. I need to get up there. I need another pearl for now. All right, there we go. Now, if I remember correctly, there's two ton there's two ways of doing this. One is with the here, I can get rid of some of this. One is with the snow carpets or the snow layers. I don't remember the exact amount. I'll try this a few times if it doesn't work. Oh, first try. Okay, cool. So we got another roof. Now I, I made a portal in the overworld near my base, so I can just sync it up with like a calculator online. So this exact block should be my portal. So now we've got another portal. Let's see if it links up to my base. And it is, okay, perfect. Don't have to worry about that. This is triggering me a bit. There we go. Now, hopefully this brings me to the nether roof and not... Perfect, okay. Now, the problem is I need piglins up here. And I think a way I can do that is by placing some crimson nylium just like in like a 10 by 10 square and just unload the chunks, come back, and see if there's any that spawned. So I finished making the platform, so in case something spawns while I'm building a farm, I have a golden helmet. So now I guess it's time to work on the design. I already brought all the materials I need, so I'll start building it. I didn't realize how easy this farm basically was. Now we just need to actually get the piglins. So I want to see... I have no idea if this actually works. I'll just try it by unloading the chunks coming back. If it does work, I'll have to use gold and also I have my golden helmet to see... Yeah, no, I, I don't know what I was thinking. This definitely does not work. So I found a Crimson Forest this time, so this time it should work because they can spawn inside a Crimson Forest Nether Waste. So that's why it didn't spawn inside the uh, the Warp Forest because they can only spawn Endermen. This this should work though. After I finish building a platform, all I need to do is like leave and unload the chunks for a bit and see how many we can get there to spawn. We technically only need two. In the future, I do want to add more. But it's supposed to be a super easy and simple farm I can just AFK at. Okay, now we have our platform built. Now I'm gonna make a little like AFK chamber at top. I think it needs to be about like 30 blocks away. So if I just stack up and make it myself a little AFK box and wait for like five minutes, we can hopefully get at least like two piglins. Then the hard part is gonna be to like actually put them inside of the chambers, but I can use the gold I have on me to lure them in. This should be good enough. And now I'll just wait for a few minutes. Oh, piglins, piglins! There's three piglins! Okay, finally. Only took like 10 attempts. I just need to kill these. So now what I can do, I can remove my helmet, get two aggro on me, and just start luring them here. Follow me, follow me, follow me. Helmet on. Then throw one gold. Okay, let's see if this works. Go. Push. And this red box. Okay, so we got one. See if I can get behind him and push him in. Come on, come on, come on. There we go, we got the two of them. Then name tag. Finally, we got both of them in here. I can destroy this little pillar, and I can actually finish building the farm. So the piglet farm is finally complete. I'm definitely gonna add more piglets later. But now the last thing to do is just to add the gold in the double chest in the back. I can just add it straight to the dispenser. And all I need to do now is press the button, and it should be working. There you go. So I'll make myself a little AFK box, and I'll AFK this for maybe about an hour. I'll see how much quartz I get. I, I'm not expecting too much. Like, I just want, like, a small, like, amount so I can help me. But yeah, I'm gonna AFK for, like, an hour. After about an hour of AFKing, I got about four and a half stacks of quartz, which isn't a lot, but it will help in the long run. But I might have to refer to the old method and just go mining underneath. It might take longer, but I definitely think it's gonna be worth it. Another good thing with this piglin farm now is I got all this leather, blackstone, obsidian, spectral arrows, like all this stuff I can easily sell in the shop I'm opening up in this episode. So 
So after about two hours of mining for quartz, I finally got three shulkers worth. And hopefully this is enough quartz to last me the entire season. But to be honest, all of this might not even be enough for the blimp I'm planning on building. And this is just one of the ingredients I need. So now the next thing I need to do, since I need smooth quartz, I need to combine all of this and also make an auto smelter so I can actually smelt the quartz block into smooth quartz block. So the auto smelter shouldn't be that hard to make because Rust did make an uh, early iron farm here. So if I go down here, there is a, not a lot, but this is iron, this, even this should be fine. And now I can actually make hoppers and that's basically what, the only thing I need for an auto smelter. So I made this simple design for an auto smelter, so, and I, I turned one one choker boxes of quartz into blocks just to test it out. So if I pull this lever, it should spread across equally. And I added like this delay so I added it can actually be at the same pace for the entire time. So there's at least one, every time it goes by, it only drops one item and not like two, one, two. It just like gives it like the same numbers everywhere. So now I'm gonna wait for all of this to get smelted up into smooth quartz block, and I'll be right back. So I ended up turning every single bit of quartz I had into smooth quartz blocks. So I should have way more than I need for this project. And I can also use some for future projects. But the next thing on the list is dark oak, which I don't have a lot of, and I don't even know where a forest is. So I'll find a forest and almost destroy the entirety of it so I have enough. Yet again, it took two hours to get all of the wood supplies. I chopped down almost every tree in that forest. And now we have all like the dark oak part of the supplies. But there's still quite a lot of stuff, like more like wood, like birch, spruce, or even like sandstone. But all of this is, shouldn't be too hard to get. So I'm, I'm gonna finish collecting all of these resources off camera. And next up, we should be able to start a time lapse for the, uh, for the blimp. So after a full day of material gathering, I finally got everything I need. So what I'll do now is bring all these boxes to the shopping district. But I thought I could also make a portal in the shopping district so I don't have to continuously fly that way. A good thing with this pigment farm is that it actually produces obsidian, so I don't have to worry about that. So now if I fly towards the direction of shopping at strike, which should be this way, I can finally make a portal there. So this portal should open up in the shopping district, so let's test it out. There we go. And actually, while I'm here, I want to check- I, I made this little, like, temporary firework shop just selling fireworks and gunpowder, and I want to see if I made any cells. Oh, I did. There we go. Two. I'll take two diamonds. But for the blimp, I was thinking of building it like in the air here because it's near spawn, and there's also there's not a lot of shops right now, or if any, like there's not an actual shop with a structure. So I thought I'd take the initiative and actually start it up. So without further ado, let's start this thing. The shop is finally finished. It took me so long not only to build this, but also to gather resources and also stock a few of the items I'm planning on selling. I don't have all of them, but up here I'm selling shirts, horse armor, like banner designs, discs, and like every single trim, but I am missing a few that we're gonna go get later in the episode. But the main shop is up this ladder. So this is exactly my night market from season one. And if you don't know how this works, you basically choose what you want to buy. For example, if I want iron, you press a button. Then you go all the way to the end. Then you just empty it out and it breaks and it kills the next shulker box. And then you can just pay in here. As of right now, the only stock I have up here is fireworks, gunpowder, emeralds, and then I upgrade runes, slime, iron, uh, totems, and also elytras. Because I want to go end bust for more shulkers for this shop. But I am planning on extending this for the entire season and hopefully selling... A ton of different items. But the shop wasn't even officially open and I already made four stacks of diamonds. So this is probably making me the richest or one of the richest players on the server already. And I have never mined a diamond ore and I will never mine a diamond ore this season. So next up, I'm planning on selling frog lights, which I'm not used, like I don't think I've ever used frog lights. I want frog lights because I want to add a sign above the actual blimp that says Sky Mall, which is the name of the shop. And I also just want to sell frog lights because I have never used frog lights and I do want to encourage myself to use them. But for frog lights, we're going to need to gather the three different frogs so we can get started on that. 
So there's a mangrove right here, so I think Hero should be able to get frogs or tadpoles. And we're gonna have to grow all three different variants. So there's a cold frog, I think, here. But I'm after the, uh, the, the tadpoles. And breathe. And I'll... I actually have no idea how it works. I just think that one of them is gonna, like, lay tadpoles or, like, lay the eggs. I can pick them up and grow them whatever biome I want. It's been about five minutes. I haven't seen any sign of them laying, so I think I'm gonna try rebring them soon and see if they actually do lay them. I've been reading the wiki, and according to the wiki, it says that every single time they breathe, they're supposed to drop frog spawn, which spawns two to five tadpoles every, like, ten minutes. For the farm design I'm trying to do, I need three of each. Oh, they finally laid it. That took forever. I can breed them again. And I'll just AFK and wait for all the tadpoles to spawn. I just want to make sure that they can't actually escape. So, like, I'll make a little ring. That should be good enough. Oh, they laid the other ones instantly. There we go. And now I guess it's just a waiting game. Okay, finally, the two frog spawn finally hatched and I got nine tadpoles, which means I got really lucky. But I exactly needed nine because I need three of each kind. I'm just gonna use the tadpoles to grow them. So the first type of tadpole I can grow is the- oh, there's a creeper. The first type of, of tadpole I can grow is probably in this biome. I think it's temperate or even warm biome. But what I'll do is I'll I'll sink portals up and like start bringing them to the farm the nether roof. But that's gonna take a while, so like I'll document it as I go on. So I'm at my base right now, and I decided to start with the cold variant of frogs because I have a cold biome right here. So I made a little box and put three tadpoles in, and now we're just gonna wait. My goal is to get three of each like variant. So there should be nine frogs total in the frog-like farm. So now I have cold frogs. The only things I forgot they can actually jump. Well, I mean, it just helps me to go get them. So if I lead all of them, I can actually bring them back to my nether portal and slowly start bringing them on the nether roof. So now we need to bring the frogs through the nether portal. There we go. I'm gonna hook them to an actual like post in there. Hopefully they don't wander back in. One, two. Then we'll leave them here for now. I brought post. There we go. So now we got three cold frogs. Now the next frogs I'm going to get is at a desert so I can get the warm variant. And I already made a portal to the uh, desert not too long ago so I can just use that to get there. Here it is. So now I'm in a desert so I'll do the exact same thing I did last time and just make a little barrier so that they can't escape, even though they can clearly jump over. But that's fine as long as they don't go too far. I actually don't know how tall frogs can jump, so I'm gonna leave it like four. If they escape, I don't really care. And then they're gonna need some kind of plateau. Now we're gonna put three tadpoles. One, two, and three. And then, then we'll make an AFK box, and now we're gonna wait again for them to grow up. Okay, now we have one frog. Oh, there's a second one. And the third one just told me in there. There he is, just swimming around. So the three warm frogs finally grew up, so now it's time to bring them all the way to put the other ones, but that's like a 1,000 block walk in a nether hub. Look how stupid this looks. There's three frogs following someone on the nether roof. Finally reaching this portal, I've been having fun with these frogs. They look ridiculous. If anyone saw me in the nether roof right now, it would be really weird. <laughs> there they are. So, okay. Now we have six frogs. Now we're only missing the temperate climate. For that, I need to go to, back to the swamp or mangrove I was at earlier. So I'll need to connect it to the nether roof. I am back in the mangrove and swamp area, so I'll make myself a little hut here. Now we can finally grow the last frogs, which are the temperate frogs. After that will be done, and we can actually start making the frog life farm. I finally got the three temperate frogs I needed. Now we got every single frog I need for the farm. Now we just have to bring them to the roof and reunite them with the other frogs. And we finally got all the nine frogs we need. There they are. Now the last thing to do is to find a basalt delta so I can actually find the correct biome to build this frog light farm because in basalt delta is only magma cubes and gas can spawn and I can gas proof the farm so only magma cubes spawn. So I'm gonna try finding one and then I'll start building the farm, I guess. So let's enter another time lapse. So 
So I just AFK the frog light farm for about 30 minutes and I already got about like two rows of each of them lights and I also got a ton of magma cream and I'm planning on selling each of these four items. I was thinking two diamonds per stack of frog lights which I think is reasonable but I guess now I'll just bring these to the shop. So I just added the frog lights and the magma to the shop but the main reason why I needed to get some frog lights was to actually add the sign above the blimp that actually says Sky Mall. So I'll make a simple design for like some text that just says Skymall right above here. So I added a sign, I think it looks fine for now. The only bad thing with this sign is that if you go on the other side, it just looks weird. But then again, there's not many people are gonna be coming from this angle because the nether portal is here. And there's not a lot of people are just flying without using the nether roof, especially in early game. But the next thing I wanna do in the episode is actually gather all the remaining armor trims I am missing. I, I don't exactly know which ones are missing, I just know I need one from a Pildra outpost, the Deep Dark, and a few others. So I'll get started on that right now. So the first rune I'm after is the one that spawns inside a Pildra outpost, and yeah, there's one right here. Let's see if I get lucky. Just... Okay, so we already got the first one. The next one I'm searching for spawns inside Nether Fortress, so let's see if I can find a chest. Here's the first chest. Nope. I just looked it up and apparently it's a 6.7% chance of it actually being in a chest. So we might be here for a while, I even need to go to another one. So I found a second nether fortress, let's see if I get lucky in this one. First chest of this new nether fortress and still no luck. Here's another chest. Nope. Here's another chest. Oh my god, finally we got one. That took like 20 different chests. The next one I can get from a woodland mansion, and I haven't seen one yet, but I do know of a big roof forest I can go to to see if I can get lucky and find one. So I found the dark oak forest I was talking about, so let's see if we can find a uh, woodland mansion. I'm not sure there is one in this one, but if not, I do have a second option where I can- Oh, there is! Okay. This is actually the first- I don't remember the last time I actually explored one of these. Oh. Well, this is a death room. What is even going on anymore? There's so many! That's the first one I used in a while. These things are powerful. There's like a cage fight going on here. And I got pushed it one floor down. Oh my god. I'm gonna die. I'm actually gonna die. Oh my fucking god, I died. Okay, so I'm back to the dark oak area, which means the mansion should be right past this river. Hopefully I can actually get my items back, because if not, that would suck. Yeah, I fell down here. This is all my, my loot. I need to fly past these. All my items. First chest. Oh, and I already got the pen armor. I'm leaving this place. I'm not gonna risk it. At least we made it with a Vex armor trim. That's what we were trying to get. Now we can finally go back home and put it inside the shop. The next one I actually need to kill an Elder Guardian, which is why I actually have to do a bit more prep. But this one shouldn't be that hard because there's a lot of ocean monuments near spawn, like this one right here. The only thing is I know there's a 25% chance of it actually dropping. So hopefully we can get lucky. Alright, let's go in the first one. We didn't get on the first try, that's fine. I'm also here to get some sponges because I will need them in the future. Let's see if I got lucky. Nope. There's three other guardians per uh, per temple, so let's find the last one. There we go. Did I get it? I don't think I did. I found a second ocean monument. Now let's hope for the best. Did we get it? Nope.
My name is since number 15. It says I should have a chance out of five, which, like, according to statistics, I should have already, like, three. Oh, I finally got it! Oh my god, it only took 15 Elder Guardians. So the last two armor trims I need are actually in a deep dark, and they're supposed to be really rare, which is why I'm in a case when I'm trying to find a ancient city to see if I can find them. But I doubt we're going to be able to find them for a while because they are extremely rare, even if we find a deep dark. Wait, that's actually a deep dark. I didn't think there was any nearby. Probably no ancient city, though. So I found an ancient city. It's just that it's going to be really hard to not let the word in, but I think we should just go for it. Alright, so we're here. It's actually fairly big compared to others I've seen. So I'm just trying to find a chest that's like on an outside. And I'm already alerting him. Yeah, no, I tried to go into deep dark. I'm not risking it. I am not ready to die. And I also... If someone wants to donate the trims they find, I will gladly buy them off them and sell them in my shop. But I'm not gonna go get them now. It's a lot way too much trouble and it's very rare to find in the first place so i'm just gonna pillar back up to safety and put all the other ones i got into the shop so i finally brought back every single armor rune i found today except for the two i couldn't find inside the ancient city so like i said if there's any members on the server that want to like donate to me i'll gladly buy them for maybe even like half a stack of diamonds each just so that i can actually have the full collection people can come here to buy any armor trims they might need in the future the last thing I want to do in this episode is actually go to my base and show you guys what happened to it because I haven't been there in a while. But Darkest and Swap Pack decided to prank me. So I think it's time to return the favor by pranking them too. They decided they live in a cherry blossom, so they decided, you know what, what if we just spam the like flowers everywhere? And they also left a sign right about here that says. How about some petals for a pizza? Which I've been trying to figure out what that means for a while now, and I just don't care to ask even. So I'm gonna clean up this prank, and then I say that we should prank them back in return. So I cleaned up my base, now it's time to go to Darkest's base, and I'll explain what I'll do to prank him in return. I am now at Darkest and Swat's base, so I have not actually seen this in person. Oh my god, Darkest has already finished his startup base. It's honestly looking really cool, especially early game. But for my prank, I was thinking that, like, I can't, I'm not just gonna return to Pels, that would be boring. I have a ton of ladders because we have a data pack, or a, uh, yeah, no, data pack that Darkest really, really hates that lets us have ladders without a back to them because if you just drop a ladder, it extends. It also lets you have, like, without having a block. But the only problem with this is that if you try breaking the bottom block, it doesn't let you, which pisses them off. So I was thinking that I can put some ladders all the way to up to build height and like a bit random in his area and it's gonna take him forever to like try to pick it up. If he needs help, of course I'll help him. But like, I just wanted I just wanted to join and just like give up on life. So I'll get started on that right now. So uh, yeah, I finished bringing Darkus's base. I kind of focus more on his starter house. I'll explain all the noises in a second, but I just spam ladders everywhere. Or he's just gonna be really tired of doing this and stop. If you're wondering what the noise is, this is just an accidental thing that I decided to keep. Oh my god, I'm already falling from my own prank. But if you have like ladders going down the glass pane, they just keep repeating themselves until they get broken, which is really funny. I wonder if like, no, it's not a duplication glitch, it's not nothing. You can just like leave it there, and the tighter you go, the more it is. Like, it's just loud for no reason, but I think it's really funny. So I decided to keep it for like extra. But yeah, I put ladders on the entirety of his interior, and I also went to go touch Swat's little starter house over here. Uh, no, wrong time. And Swat's little starter house over here, and a few of the other builds. I mean, Swat only has like a little hut, which means I couldn't do much, but I did the best I could. And I had just found like a few other buildings, which I don't even know what they are. But yeah, I think that's a good way of coming back, and I'm kind of curious to see if they're gonna retaliate yet again. But that's gonna be for next episode. So I decided there was no better place to do the outro than in my new shop, so thank you everyone so much for watching. Episode 3 shouldn't be out in too long. You will see some changes from episode to episode, because I still need to like, make it a habit. And, like You might see different styles of episode, more like... Next episode should actually have Optifine, and it lets me use my camera more. And, like I have camera utilities, I have replay mod, I get to use all of those tools a lot more. But yeah, 
that's it for me today. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see y'all next time. Bye!